it's been a while since my last video um, and this is because uh, the last thing that I did was take the MCAT and then I had this whole dreadful month-long period where I was just waiting to get my score back and if you guys know or don't know uh, this is my third time taking or retaking the MCAT and I finally have my score now so I wanted to make a video of how I studied for it the first second and third time what I wish I did different what I think really worked and um, what helped me boost my score if I look a little rough right now, it's because I came from shift and I wanted to film this quick video before I go to bed. So what I want to do is just go through the study materials that I used to study, the practice scores that I got, the scores that I got officially for my MCAT exams, and basically leading that up to my final score that I now have that I'm now going to use to submit to med schools. So let's jump right in. To study content for the first MCAT exam, the books that I used were Kaplan. And it was this big stack of books. And what I did was I read through the books and then every time I thought I, there was something important, something I didn't know, something that I wanted to remember, I basically took notes in my notebook. So as you've guys probably already seen from my videos, it pretty much looked like this. It was just a ton of notes and some practice problems. The other thing I did to memorize more quicker terms like amino acids, for example, is I made flashcards and I made all my flashcards um, physically on little note cards. Another thing that I used for content and memorizing were little sheets like this that I just called quick sheets when I could quickly look over something and remember a pathway or an amino acid or something like that. The other big thing that I used for the first MCAT exam was UWorld. I got UWorld because a lot of people recommended it and so I pretty much, I think the first time around, I didn't get through the whole thing. Um, I got through the majority of the questions, I didn't do all of them. At the time, UWorld seemed really hard, and I think I was getting a lot of questions wrong, and a lot of times there was content that I was missing that I didn't catch when I was going through the Kaplan books, and so I'd put it down in my notebook, and then I would try to memorize it that way. And then, of course, I took the practice AMC exams, and um, going in order of how I took them, actually the first thing that I took was the next step diagnostic, and my score for that was 490. Then after that, I took my four AMC practice tests. These are, of course, dispersed through my study schedule. The first one I took, I got a 498. The second one, I got a 498. The third, I found really hard, I got a 493. And then the fourth one that I took was a 501. So seeing this trend, seeing that I jumped from a 493 was a, to a 501 was very promising. And I think this was about two weeks prior to my um, exam and so I figured that if I just kept studying and filling in gaps that this 501 could potentially jump to at least like a 504 on the real exam when I took it and so for my real exam for MCAT number one I got a 497 and that's in the 37th percentile. For the first MCAT I gave myself around three months to study and I pretty much gave myself three months to study for the second and for the third time around. To me it felt like just enough time to um, go through all the content, do practice questions, but at the same time not long enough to where I started to feel like I just hated my life and was completely burnt out. So now for the second time around. Like I said I think I gave myself around um, three months. Um, I think COVID actually ended up pushing my second exam back a little. Yes, I did take it during COVID, which means that my exam was also shortened. Pretty much the second time around, I used the exact same thing and I did it all over again. I reread all the Kaplan books, going through all the content again. Um, any gaps, once again, that I thought I had in terms of content, I would fill in into my notebook with my notes. I would make more flashcards. I printed out more quick sheets for myself to memorize and I got UWorld again and I restarted all my UWorld questions and this time I pretty much I think had around 200 questions left that I didn't finish so I got through the majority of the questions which I felt would really help fill in my gaps and really help me boost my score and I think uh, most of those 200 questions were cars which I was scoring decent on so I wasn't really worried about that section. So second time around, pretty much all the same study materials. And going through my scores, the first practice AMC exam, I got a 501, which already was an improvement. The thing that I do want to say though, as like a disclaimer, is because I took these AMC practice exams, I took all four of them. And those are the only four that are provided. I didn't have any other full length practice exams that I felt like I wanted to take. I know there's a lot available like Next Step and Princeton and Kaplan and all those, but I wanted it to be as true as it could be. So I figured that I would just retake the AMC practice exams again. 
At that time, I was worried that I might remember some questions, but I was really thinking that these questions are so hard that there's no way that I'm gonna remember the answers to all of them and that the score should be accurate. So back to practice exam number one. I got a 501. The second, second practice exam, I got a 508, which was a lot higher. Third practice exam, I got a 508 again, which was really high again. Well, at least for me. And then the fourth one, I got a 504. Some questions I did feel like I would see and I would remember. Um, so I did think my score was a little bit inflated. So when I sat for my second official MCAT practice exam, I ended up getting a 498, which is in the 40th percentile. So only a one point boost and a three percentile increase. So this was definitely kind of a blow to me because I felt like now I studied for six months total. I went through all the content, through all the questions, all the practice exams. I felt like I was doing everything I could to boost my score. So I was really sad to see that it only went up by one point. At this point, I think I definitely realized that I needed to completely change the way I was studying and do something different. So then when I decided to take the third MCAT exam in September, I figured that I was going to do an official class that was just going to lead me through how to study for the MCAT, lead me through the content and everything. I think I got really close to signing up for the next step one, but I ended up not because I realized I once again only had around three months and the class would take a lot longer to complete and I was still working full time and I didn't have that time for an official class. So instead of an official class, one big thing that I changed was that I got private tutoring. I got private tutoring through Varsity Tutors and it was just um, a girl who was pretty much my age who was pretty much in the same situation as I was. She was also applying to med schools and she had already taken the MCAT, got a good score. And one of the big things that I was looking for is that I wanted a tutor who struggled to get a good score. I wanted someone who knew the hardships that I was going through, um, how hard it was for me to boost my score. I didn't want someone who sat to take the MCAT after studying for a couple weeks and aced it. So I was really looking for someone who could relate to me and help me break down this information. The other big thing that I changed when studying for the third MCAT was the company that I used to study content and basically the books. And for this, I used Next Step instead of Kaplan. And what I found is that the Next Step books were a lot harder for me. I felt like the information was more challenging. And the big thing was that it integrated all the sciences together, which I felt like Kaplan did less of. So for example, if I was reading about physics, it would bring up content that related to chemistry or bio. It challenged my brain to remember information from all the other sciences and integrate it together to really understand it. And I thought that, that was really helpful for me. The other thing that these books came with was um, the Science Q book that I thought was really neat. It is full with discrete questions and I didn't do the whole book, obviously. I did a little bit of, e of from each chapter and I wish I did more, but I kind of ran out of time, but I thought it was really helpful to quickly review because the questions are discrete. So they're, you answer them pretty fast, but it's a really good tool to just quickly review information you just learned. Shout out to my friend who provided me with all these books also. Thank you. The other book that I used a little bit, which my tutor recommended I buy because she used it, was this Princeton MCAT Science Workbook, and it's also really big. And this one, instead of being discrete questions, are questions based on passages, but the passages are a pretty quick read. So it was nice not to have to read a whole page long passage and really more focus on a small passage and the questions related to it. So I did find this helpful. I wish I had more time to go through this too, which once again, I didn't have that much time. So I only ended up doing a couple of passages from here, but it was still helpful. The third big change that I ended up making is I completely ditched my notebook and my physical note cards and instead I started using Anki like a lot of people recommended and a lot of people specifically told me to use. So I finally caved and tried Anki and if my camera keeps slightly moving positions I apologize it's because my phone keeps running out of memory so I keep having to take it out and basically make memory for this video. So like I was saying I found Anki to be really helpful. I made my own decks. I made a deck for each um, subject matter and basically went over that. And it was really helpful that I brought up the cards based on how well you knew them and basically staggered how often you saw it and that really was helpful in the information that I retained and um, how well I could recall it when I saw something. So this time around another change that I made was because I have now taken the AMC practice exams each twice, I figured that I should buy practice exams from a different company. So what I did is I bought 10 of them from Princeton. I knew that if I did Kaplan or Princeton or Next Step or whatever, that they would be harder than the AMC one. So I did my, expect my scores to be a little lower. 
The other study tool that I completely forgot to mention was I bought the AMC question packs. I don't know why I didn't buy those question packs the first or second time when I was studying, but I bought it this time and those were really, really helpful because they're very, sometimes I felt like they were easier, but sometimes they felt very similar to how I thought or how the MCAT felt. Anyway, I did, I think, one of each section and um, that felt like it was enough for me. So basically with this third time around with my practice exams, I started with the next step diagnostic, like I did the very first time around and I got a 497. This was a little bit disheartening at first because after studying for the MCAT now twice and starting to study it for a third time, it was a little bit sad to see that my score was still below 500. So then I went and took my first Princeton exam and I got a 496. My third Princeton exam, I got a 496 again. Once again, this is disheartening because I keep getting below 500 and I'm also just plateauing at the same exact score range of like 496 to 497. Next Princeton exam I took, I got a 493. So basically at this point, I'm just questioning my life's choices. At this point, I decided to take the Relay AMC or the Practice AMC exam, even though yes, I've already taken them, but a lot of time has now passed since my second, um, since my second go around. So I figured I would try and take the basically almost real replica of the exam and take the Practice AMC exam. So the first one I took, I got a 502. So better. The second one I took, I got a 506. So a lot better. And this time around, I felt like I wasn't even, um, I wasn't really remembering the questions like I did when I was going over these a second time. So that was a good sign. At this point, my tutor was insisting that I do the Princeton review exams, but I told her I really couldn't do it because I kept scoring below the 500. And even though, yes, I knew that they were harder and I was probably scoring a couple points over, I just felt so disheartened every time I saw a 490 something exam score and we were getting closer to my actual exam date and I just didn't want to be depressed <laughs> like going into the, my last couple weeks studying for the exam. So that's when I realized that there was one AMC practice exam that I hadn't taken and it was because that was the free AMC practice exam version and somehow I had skipped over it the first two times that I was studying to take the MCAT and I had it now. I've never taken it and it's still a replica pretty much of the real one and so I figured this one would give me an accurate score. So this would be the one that would tell me what I would get on my real MCAT exam. So I took that and I got a 505 and I was pretty happy with that score. I really wanted at least a 504 so 505 if I got that I'd be happy. So finally, this brings us to the last MCAT that I took. This was the third official MCAT exam that I took and my final score was a 505. So pretty much like that AMC full length practice exam that I took right before predicted, a 505. And like I said, I was gonna be happy with a 505 on the real thing and I got a 505 on the real thing. So I was really happy. I also came out of that testing center so sad thinking that I completely failed it right after the chem phys section I thought that's it I scored below 500 again it just felt like I basically failed that entire section so it was really hard to focus for the next three sections just to try and hope that I would somehow pick up my score it's definitely not the best score I definitely could have scored better it might not be the most competitive score even but it's a 505 62nd percentile I went up by a total of seven points and I went up by a total of 22 percentile points or whatever and I really worked so hard. I took this exam three times. I've spent so much time studying and restudying and restudying for this that this improvement was good enough for me and I was very happy with it. I wanted to make this video to show you guys what I used to study for the first, second, and third times, how I changed how I was studying and what I was studying with um, to basically give you guys an idea of what I thought helped me improve. So I hope that part was helpful or useful in any way. And if you guys have questions, I'm happy to answer anything about how I studied or prepared or whatever. Basically now what's next for me is I submitted my official score to all the schools now. I already had some applications submitted, so pretty much that was all done. I finished all my applications and now once again it's just a waiting game for me and I'm gonna try and see if I hear back from any schools. It's really nice to feel that I'm finally moving forward again and that I'm not stagnant and trying to study for the same thing like month in and out, in and out. Anyway, I hope this video was interesting and helpful in some way. Once again, if you guys have questions, please ask. I'm happy to help with any 
questions, studying tips, or whatever you guys have. Again, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye! Thank you.